Hey YouTube, Do It Yourself Junkie 369 and in today's video I'm going to be talking about machine countersinking with this number 40 cutter. You could also might be using a number 30 or a number 8 depending on what you're doing. Number 8's are for screws, number 30 is just usually for a bigger rivet. This particular machine countersinking that we're going to be doing today is on the vertical stabilizer rear spar and basically you countersink from here up to here and it has to be deep enough to accept the dimpled vertical stabilizer skin so on a normal machine countersink you want to cut deep enough so that the rivet just sets flush but to accept the dimpled skin once you achieve that depth, usually you have to go seven clicks deeper. And I'll show you a close up of this. Basically, this end goes on the skin, and then you push down while drilling, and it has a stop. And this stop is governed by basically a threaded portion here that is a, has a teeth between the two halves. So you loosen this lock nut and then you retract it and move it. So uh, for that dimple, if it's moving a quarter inch each click, you move it seven clicks. But first you have to achieve that uh, countersink just deep enough for the rivet. So for that, you'll need one of the rivets that you are going to be using. And you need your correct pilot cutter. And that just goes in here. And then the two halves screw together. And this has a hole in it that you can stick an Allen key or something through or a nail and hold it while you tighten it. So once that's tightened in there, if I push down on it all the way you can see the cutting tool is protruding almost the entire distance which is entirely too much and you have to figure your countersink depth is only that little bit right there not very much just the head of the rivet So to set this up, it's almost impossible to uh, measure such a thing. So what I'm going to do is set it up to where it is not really protruding at all, stick it in the drill motor, and do a you can use a piece of scrap aluminum for this just so you don't mess it up but I'm pretty sure I'm not protruding enough there at all I'm not protruding at all really so I'm going to test that out on a piece of scrap aluminum make sure I'm not really cutting anything or cutting too deep and then go from there and adjust it in a click or two depending on what kind of cut I get remember uh, each click is roughly about a thousandths of an inch and you want to be seven thousandths of an inch deeper than your rivet head so once you get the rivet head set in the hole flush you go seven clicks from there uh, personally since I don't trust that this tool is thousandths of an inch yet uh, I'm going to do some testing with it maybe do three clicks and then put the skin on there and see if the dimple sits in there and slowly work towards that seven clicks and, and then make sure the dimple skin sits in there flush it's better to be a little bit more conservative than to remove too much material and then you're stuck 
uh, with something that's over dimpled and that you need to replace. So we'll get the air compressor fired up. And check the setup on this. And this is one area where pre reading the first sections of the plans pays off because it tells you exactly what to do. And that section uh, 5E is what they reference whenever there's a countersinking step. In reality, it ended up being uh, section 5.5. I don't know when they changed that or if it's changed on every set of plans. Just be aware it might be section 5.5. And that's what you want to read for machine countersinking. I started out where I wasn't cutting anything, went about three or four clicks per try until I started cutting and then I, I slowly worked until the rivet sitting flush with the top of the skin so basically I can drag my finger across it and not feel anything and at that point I was almost doing like one click per test now that I have that, I'm going to go about three clicks further and test it on the skin. And then another three clicks, test it on the skin, depending on how close it's getting down. And then at that point, I might start doing one click, since I'll be at seven. And eventually, I'll get to where at 7 I should be getting the skin laying flush against the spar. If not, I'll go a little bit deeper until I get that skin laying flush against the spar. And at that point, it's set up correctly, you lock it down, and you drill your holes. And every once in a while, you should check this thing, make sure it hasn't gotten out of adjustment or that you're not pressing too hard, and kind of do a fit check. Okay, so I have that set correctly, and uh, on that one it took about nine clicks to get the right depth for the skin to sit in there. So at this point, it's set up, ready to use. I just have to lock down that collar, make sure it doesn't adjust. Um, a trick that some people have done is they put tape on both halves and they'll put a line on one part of it and that represents kind of their index line and then on the other line or on the other piece of tape they'll put lines so like they'll put a line here that lines up that for, for uh, seven clicks in or in my case nine clicks in and then they'll go to nine clicks out put a line there that's where they drill the rivet flush and those markings are accurate as long as you keep this cutter in here that way you don't have to remember where it was set to last. You can just look at the marks on the tape and line it up to where you need it to be set. So that's a pretty useful tip. So hope that you find this video helpful on how to set up the microstop. There, of course there's a link for both tools down there. Uh, I'm going to get back to work finishing out this vertical stabilizer. Please subscribe to the video if you want to see more of my build videos and tips that or how to use stuff, not really tips. Uh, there might be some tips. Most of the tips I'm giving though are stuff that you find in the first five sections of the manual. And I'll put 
probably in another video where I talk about it a little bit more in depth, uh, one of the build videos, I'll cover some stuff that I found out and researching on vans is like, oh yeah, I should have done this and turned out it was in the front matter of the manual and I had even read it and forgotten that I, about it and I made a, a small mistake. <laughs> so please subscribe, watch the rest of the videos. Please hit the like button if this helped you out with setting up your own tools or getting over that fear of doing something wrong. And thanks for watching.